when you're ready, sis. What a privilege it is to come to each home. And I, I have a sister-in-law in Florida that is watching. She'll be on the airways, and just as soon as the sissy puts it out there, she's waiting to fall. So welcome into our home, each and every one of the ones that uh, aren't in this worship hour this morning. The title of the message this morning is called, Are We There Yet? And the scripture is found in James 1, 1 through 8. <clears throat> so as we bring together the message with the title, Are We There Yet? And the title actually started with another title. I just finished a book of Warren Winsby called, God Isn't in a Hurry. As he brings about how God is always working in our lives, but I remember years ago, that once a year, we would always take a family trip. And it seemed to be a, first thing they would do would hide all my Charlie Pride tapes. And then we wouldn't be on the road very long until we would hear, are you there yet? And then... Usually, most of the time, before they knew we was gone, they would watch the Apple Dumpling Gang again in unison. And I would hear Don Knotts and some of his sayings. But then I would hear, Mr. Donovan, I got to go. And the memories are so precious. So are you making memories of each and every day? Somewhere along the line, many, many years ago, there was a quote that got misplaced. And that quote is, virtue, virtue, oh no, I'm sorry, patience is a virtue, saith the Lord. Somewhere along the line, that got misinterpreted with a quote from the Bible. In fact, that quote started in England in 1360 by a poet looking for faith. So he quoted it, and then it said, oh, yeah, that's in Psalms. Sounds good. Problem is, there's no truth in it. Oh, there's truth in the saying, but nowhere in the Bible will you find patience is a virtue. In fact, I looked it up, and I was amazed. Patiently is only found in the Old Testament twice. But it's only in the Psalm. Patience is only found once. Patience, zero, not there. And God, not to hurt Warren Wisby said he took a long flight one day to a foreign country. And when they took him to his room that night, the guest house, before he walked in the door, there was a little sign over the door where he was staying. It said, Lord, please make me patient and do it right away. <laughs> Don't ever pray that prayer. God might answer. Take your Bibles. I wish I had that old deep. Negro, spiritual, black, Baptist voice. Turn with me to James. James chapter 9. That's a hard book to find. It's almost near the end of the New Testament. It's only five chapters. James is supposedly the first book of the New Testament. Order of the way they was recorded. The 
recorded roughly in the year 45, so only just like 14 years after Jesus had died, roughly. And James, the second in line of the children of Mary. And growing up, James didn't think his brother was the Savior. In fact, he thought he was crazy. Family got together one time and said, Look, Jesus, you've got to quit this silliness. Then after the resurrection, he got it. After a long time of suffering, he got it. Then he began to look over his people, the Jews. And he said, I was there once, so I understand. But they need to know what they're going through. This is the grass, it'll pass away. So James gave his family, gave to us. James, a servant of God, and listen to this. Lord Jesus Christ. To the twelve tribes scattered among the nations, consider it pure joy, my brother, whenever you face trials of many times. Because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be, may be mature and complete not lacking anything. Then if you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives it generously to all without finding fault. Then it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. Because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he'll receive anything from the Lord. He's double-minded man, unstable in all he does. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the preserving, Lord, of your word. We thank you for your brother, Lord, who one day recognized you as his Lord. Lord, I thank you that your word is still pure in its purest form. So Lord, this morning, I pray that the Holy Spirit would just move in our midst, that each one, Lord, would take that challenge to be selfish with you. Only you, Lord, not you in the world, but you in tomorrow, but you in yesterday. Just you. So Lord, move in our midst now. May I be a servant James calls himself to God and to Lord Jesus the Christ. Precious name of our Savior. Amen. I'm convinced that the one who doesn't learn to be patient, whatever age it might be, is not likely to learn anything else very soon. God has ordained that maturity, maturity in growing up in the physical sense and maturity in the word, maturity in your occupation is a slow process. It's not an instant experience. It's not salvation where in the blink of an eye you went from unsaved to saved forever. Grab that, grasp it, and don't let the world take it away because they'll try in so many different ways. Maturity in the Word is also slow. Instant growth of a spiritual saint years. Whatever occupation you're in, whatever time of the world you've grown, 
God is giving us time to be accustomed to growing up. And you're not going to learn that in an instant of time. Impatience is usually the sign of it that you're not mature yet. We live in a world today, and every one of you knows that of impatience. Or stand in front of a microwave and say, hurry up. I just put a new microwave in the Oakmar restaurant. It wasn't a thing, no matter with the old one. But the new one will do in 10 seconds what the old one took 40 seconds. They just saved 30 seconds on your breakfast. And you might laugh, and I laughed as I was installing it, and the other one's over in the building with the other stuff that was too slow. At lunchtime, when the crowd comes in, they want to be fed and leave. No time for conversation. I feel so sorry for my one son. Kevin, if you're watching this, listen well. <laughs> You make time for dinner time at night with your wife and your family. Yeah. They eat in their bedrooms with their phone or with their laptop. They're here, there, and going. He called me this week. I was on the road to Morgantown. He said, Dad, I'm in Lowe's. Where do I find that tool where you smash out the end of a pipe? I said, what are you talking about? I got a pipe I need to bash out. I said, it's in plumbing, Kevin. It's called a flaring tool. Aren't we like that? We ain't got time to search. We want to call somebody. God, I have this problem. And he says, well, I got it covered. But you don't understand, God. I'm going through this trial. Well, that ought to be a joyful time. What did my brother say? Your brother said, count it a pure joy when you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith develops persevere. I ain't got time to persevere, God. Guilty. Little children and little children in Christ think they've arrived when they feel the car stop at the first stop. The Bible Saints was no different. Abraham got weary of the promise that God gave to him. Tried to hurry God's word along a little bit. So he took Hagar as his second wife. And every one of you know how that ended up. Destroyed the family life. In fact, today they are still fighting in the Middle East. Abraham got impatient. They'll be fighting until the Lord comes again. What's the battle about in the Middle East? It's about Abraham taking a wife and not waiting upon God. Moses got impatient and killed an Egyptian. Everyone knows how that ended up. Cost him 40 years on the west side of the desert, shepherding his father in law's sheep. Years later, he got impatient again. God told him to speak to the rock, Moses. Took his staff out and started beating on it. That one cost him a trip into the promised land. Psalms 32, verse 9 says, Don't be like the horse and the mule. Don't be so impatient or stubborn that you can't hear my voice. You see, the problem is that, first of all, God gave us free spirit. That's one of the problems. But I'm thankful He did because I don't want to be a robot. The problem is we're prone to walk by sight. 
not by that inner faith that God assures us that His Word. But then we get so busy on our own behalf. We want to see something happen. I'm here to tell you today the Word of God thinks more of you, each and every one of you, wherever you are, Saved, unsaved, young or old. He thinks more of the individual than he does of the work the individual is called to do. Grasp that. God thinks more of me than what he has set for me to do. Yes. And when you grasp that, Truly believe that as an individual. I see Sheriff Jerry Becker, and I just thought of our house many, many years ago. He's had the Bible. I got to share it with the Sheriff, but it's good. <laughs> She's crazy. She has hives. We had Bible study at our house. I heard some noise in the basement that just didn't sound just right. And Drew was putting popcorn in a fan. <laughs> and turned it on. And popcorn everywhere. They was having a blast. I said, give him the gold star. And she made him apologize to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Have you apologized to God lately for just doing something silly? We want to see it. We want to see something happening. God says, I'm working on it. What was the three sisters that lived together? What was the name of that sitcom? Golden Girls. Golden Girls. Thank you. <laughs> Picture this. Sicily. Picture this. Red Sea. Box Canyon. Two million people. The Egyptian army is behind them. The Red Sea is in front of them. It's getting dark. I mean really, really, really dark. And the wind is picking up. And they're coming to Moses. They meaning the leaders of, they're not a nation yet. So the Jewish Hebrews are coming to Moses. They just went through all the miracles. And now they're right to the sea. Say, Moses, it's really getting dark. Moses, the wind is really picking up, and I hear the footprints of chariots. And Moses says, just stand still. But Moses, you don't understand. It's really getting windy, and it's getting darker. And the Israelites were sure that God had deserted them. Finally, I can just picture them in my mind. See how dark it is. See how windy it is. And directly, yet God was working in the wind. And in the darkness. And he blew back the Red Sea. And he froze it. And they walked through one dry ground. When your life is going through the darkness and the trials are overwhelming you, I'm telling you, God is in the trials. And they're there on your behalf. I finally almost got it. Paul told the church, oh, that you would be like me. for these change. Paul said, I want you to feel the stripes. I want you to feel the rocks. I want you to feel the depression. I want you to feel the anxiety. I want you to feel the separation from the world. I want you to feel everything that I feel. Because there you'll find God. Shame on the one that says hurry through a trial. Shame on the one. Says I. I 
we there yet? Because when you're there, the trial ends and 99.9% .9 of the time, your faith in God ends. Guilty. Picture Jacob 300 and some years later after the crossing of the Red Sea. Terrible famine. He sent his boys to, to get grain in Egypt. When they got there, they didn't recognize Joseph. And they, Joseph gave them grain, but he kept Benjamin. You go back and I'm sorry, he didn't kept Benjamin, he kept Simeon. You go back home, and I want to see my the youngest one, his name is Benjamin. They came home, the boys did, their sacks was filled with grains, and they opened them up, and there was the money, everything was there. It's found in Genesis 42. They said, but we got to go back, we got to take Benjamin. And Jacob says, they've already taken Joseph. Simeon is no more, and now you're trying to take my youngest son? He said, all these things are against me. And when in reality, it was all working on his behalf. God's delay. Is not always God's do now. God can grow a mushroom overnight, but it takes years to build a giant sequoia. That's why, my children, when you're in the trials, overnight success is a daylight disaster. pray as you and I wait patiently for the Lord that we'll be richer for it. Because of the years of preparation that He has invested in your life, wherever that life might be. Many of the greatest songs came from David. Not when he was sitting on the throne surrounded by safety and wealth. When he was hiding in the caves, in the cave. He said, Oh, that I might find God. Our Lord even spent 30 years getting ready for three years of ministry. Perhaps the hardest place to be patient is in the furnace of suffering. I get that. The Lord Jesus got that. And He doesn't always explain what He's doing. And rarely does He tell us why. But intimacy through Christ is inherited. It's only through patience. For you have need of endurance, the Bible teaches. But after you've done the will of God, I love this next one, then you receive the promise. Knowing that the Father is with us, I encourage us. Christians ought to be the most calmest people on earth. When you see the change of power, you need to be like the golden girls. Picture this. My God is still sufficient. 
Now that doesn't mean you're not going to go through trials and tribulations. And I'm not saying you always got to be happy and joyful when you're going through your day. So they're going sick. You can't hold your own head up. I'm not saying that. I'm saying sometimes you'll fail. Sometimes you'll be like John the Baptist. Is it really you, Lord? There's no sin in asking that. The sin is when you answer that. The young man has... No way of way to say it. The young man asked an old pastor one day. <laughs> I was going to say the cure, but now he's old. Why has God made you this way? Why has God made me walk with a limp or one blind eye or one arm or one leg? Why has God made me this way? In the mature, the pastor said, yeah. God didn't make you anyway. He's making you to the image of his son. What a difference that makes in our life. Can God make a believer patient? He sure can. But oh, it takes years. You see, we need to trust whatever the gracious God has placed before us. But I'm here to tell you, the school of patience has yet to produce one graduate. And God never grants an honorary degree on patience. When is this COVID going to end? I don't know. <coughs> Always learning, always maturing. Sometimes failing. The examinations get harder. But before we know it, the lessons are beginning to take hold. Lord, make me patient. Prayer cannot be answered, even though the Almighty God can answer it. You see, what He's doing, He's turning clay into useful vessels. You know, when you're going through the fire, the dross is burnt off, but the pure gold is refined. Do you want to be refined? burn away. Only the true Word of God. The truth will remain. Wisdom ah. I don't care if I'm dumb as a box of rocks. I want to know the truth of the wisdom. I want to be the gold molded that my church is painful but oh is it ever so joyful let us pray our heavenly fathers we look into your face today and we see Jesus Lord we see the cross but then we see the resurrection Lord don't make us patient. Mold us to be more like your son Jesus. And Lord, for that, we will hold to the truth of your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.